the internet is the worst guys um just so you know uh usually you should not take this long to set this up <sighs> all right Welcome back, everyone. We are Jocks of All Trades podcast. I'm Brad. This is Kyle, and we are bringing to you all the hot stuff going on in sports. Kyle, do you want to start us out this week? Yeah, man. Excited to be back uh, like we did last week, where we were right, where we were wrong. Last week, I told you that uh, Brandon Cooks, you should probably drop him, and then he goes off this week. Figure that. I told you to start Jimmy G against the Dolphins because it's his first game back. Nope. Dolphins murdered the 49ers. That didn't work out. Um, I did tell you that Joe Mixon would do nothing against the Ravens, and he didn't. He sure was right there. And then I told you Zach Ertz would do nothing against the Steelers. Also right. Um, I did also tell you that the Eagles would lose against the Steelers, and that's not the greatest prediction in the world, but, uh, yeah, I was right there. Uh, That's about it. We didn't really make too many predictions in the last episode. Um, I believe on Facebook, though, I did mention a few weeks back that the Lakers would win in six games, and they did. So let's start it off uh, with that, Brad. Lakers won. What do you think? I'm just not impressed. Wow. Um, The Heat, that's probably the easiest team they could have faced in the finals. It would have been awesome if it was Giannis. It would have been cool if it was my guys in Boston, but – the heat who do you have jimmy butler and then it really drops off yes i know there's bam yes i know there's you Warren. have kelly olenic brad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you just talk about the like depth of the two teams it wasn't even close it wasn't even close no one should be surprised by a game six the only thing that should surprise you is that it had to go to a game six and that the lakers couldn't just close it out early but credit i'll, I'll give credit to, to jimmy buckets he really came out and he played yeah i think one of those games they only played six or seven guys and like the starting five for the heat kind of ran most of the game and the heat still won. So like, you're not really facing a deep team against the heat, um, especially with all the injuries they had in those finals. Um, Again, I think in a next episode, we could talk about who's the goat, who's not is LeBron worth it, all that kind of stuff. Um, I agree with you. I'm not impressed. I really, I didn't really care that they won. I was just kind of like, oh, look at that. Okay, back to my, back to my life. So it just feels like there's going to have like an asterisk behind everything that happens this season. It's like, oh, okay. Like it doesn't really matter. And I don't think it would have mattered for any team. Like whoever won it, everybody would just been like, oh, you know, it is what it is. And maybe next year, they'll go back in full swing and we'll see LeBron do it again. Um, but I don't really think the Lakers face much adversity this year in terms of like the roster, um, who they, you know, who they played against and to face a Miami heat team in the finals comparatively to what Jordan faced. I, I think it's not that much. So. And, and the argument is going to be, well, Miami went like undefeated in the playoffs. Okay but we also lost the home and away aspect of the finals that really tips the balance in some of these games. Who's to say that Boston would have beat Toronto in seven? Who's to say that Miami would have beaten Giannis and the Bucks? Like there's no, there was no pressure difference. There was no pressure. Yeah. Um, so I think that question mark will always hang in the balance for Miami as in, did they really deserve to be there? Um, and then it really gives you that whole, well, yeah, the Lakers should have won. If the Lakers didn't win, we all would have a whole different thing to say about LeBron. Yeah, be, but, uh, most news outlets, sports channels, will be talking about the Heat and yeah. is LeBron the good? Yeah, they'd be all over that. Uh, turning to football, we did have some major news. Dak Prescott did uh, break his ankle, I believe. He's out for the year. That was sad to see. Um, even though I'm an Eagles fan, it's sad to see a good player go down like that. And he's yeah. having a heck of a year too. So. What do you think about the Cowboys? What do you think about Andy Dalton? Um, can he win this division? It's possible. It's entirely possible. This division is garbage this year. Uh, hey, they now. should just rename it Eagles to. Are really should, good, Brad. Okay. Okay. They should rename it to the uh, the NFC least 
like it's it's pretty it's pretty rough. Um, I think if Andy Dalton can play well, uh, he has plenty of weapons and CD lamb, Michael Gallup, uh, Amari Cooper, he's got Zeke behind him. It's not like the court, sorry to Dak, this is nothing against Dak, but you could plug almost any quarterback in there and get the same success because those weapons are really, really great on that offense. Um, I think it's really going to come down to is Andy Dalton ready to play football? Um, we they call we, him the red we, rifle, man. Is the red only, rifle. Can we name that our episode? <laughs> episode Good three, rifle. Red Rifle. Um, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, he's um, he has a lot to work with. The offensive line is pretty brutal this year for them. They have a lot of injuries. But Still. if they run their offense through Zeke, I think a lot of quarterbacks can be successful. Um, to me, it's up to their defense. Like, will their defense actually show up? Show up? This? If yeah. it does, I mean, they definitely could win the NFC East. Um I did want to kind of change to Dak. Like, is this his last year in Dallas? Do you think he wants to come back? And if not, where do you see him going? I don't think he wants to. Jerry Jones should have paid this man up front. He was playing out of his mind until he went down with the ankle injury. He was playing super well. Kudos to Dak. Like, I, I didn't expect that to come from him, even though he's a great athlete. Um if I were Dak, I wouldn't stay. Are you going to stay with an organization that keeps saying that it doesn't trust you, essentially? Like, I don't think anyone would stay in that situation. Um, if he were to go anywhere, I don't I don't even know, man. Where would he go? It, it just depends on who stays and who goes. Um, I don't know. Do you think Justin Herbert needs more time? The Chargers might be a, a kind of nice place for Dak to go. I think a team like the Colts could use him. If yeah. the Colts aren't interested, aren't interested in like you know drafting a, a quarterback high, and developing them, like if they think they're ready to go, then he's probably one of those guys that can just you know plug and play. Um, moving on to a different quarterback who had a terrible week, not because of an injury, just because he stinks. Jimmy Garoppolo against the <laughs> Miami Dolphins. Uh, what happened there, and what's wrong with the 49ers? I went back and watched it before we, we did our stuff just to make sure that I wasn't like hallucinating and that the Dolphins didn't really drop that many points on them. Uh, but I don't know. They just didn't look in sync on defense. It looked very porous. There were lots of big plays by Fitzpatrick. Long passes, too, that should be covered, and you should have a safety back to cover with that. But just wide open, crazy pass plays. The run game was alive. They just let him have everything. My goodness, I would have started playing like uh, like a two-hand touch out there for, for goodness sake. Like it was awful. And then the offense looked uh, in, looked out of sync too. Uh, McKinnon has been incredible for the past couple weeks in relief for Raheem. And it just didn't seem like Raheem was ready. It didn't seem like McKinnon was ready to give up his spot. The receivers just weren't in touch with Jimmy G. Sad to say, I would have just stuck with um, – What's his name? Who's their backup? Nick Mullen? I would have stuck with Mullen. No, no. Both of them are garbage. But I would have gone with that if Jimmy G's going to play like he hasn't played the football in like three years. And that was the big thing in uh, the Super Bowl with, with Jimmy G is that he didn't really show up. And um, I think it's a very similar situation to Jared Goff with St. Louis – or, sorry, Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, is that their coach is so good, they can kind of make any – average quarterback sometimes look better than what they are and yeah. once they're asked to do like you know more than what the offense is designed to do or if they have pressure on them their quarterbacks kind of crumble and we saw that with Jimmy G in the Super Bowl I was actually thinking you know if they want to move on from Jimmy G that would be a pretty good place for uh, Dak Prescott to go I think. Really good place. so the question remains then is this kind of Super Bowl fatigue for the 49ers yeah, uh, I think we've seen that with uh, the Falcons, you know, such a great team. They lose the Patriots, and then a couple years they are downhill, and they're going to blow it up. So I hope you don't see that with the Niners. I think they are built better than that, like in terms of a uh, front office standpoint, in terms of a culture standpoint. Like they have a lot of good defensive pieces too, Um it could turn quickly for him though, if they don't get healthy and if they don't find a right quarterback, if Jimmy G isn't the one to, you know, carry them. Now I, I will be kind of 
kind with the 49ers and say there's a lot of injuries on defense. Yeah. But that doesn't excuse where the offense should have been. The offense should have at least tried to keep you in that game, even if the defense wasn't playing well. But it just crumbled as a whole team, just throw it away. So, yeah. Niners lose big to the Dolphins. Let's switch it to the Dolphins. Are you a believer in the Dolphins' future? Fitz magic. What the heck, man? Uh, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, because he is very hot and cold. Um, but, you know, if he's going to keep on a hot streak, I see no reason for Tua to come in. Let Tua keep resting. Let Tua keep learning the offense. Give him time. If you're going to keep winning games, why even put Tua in this year? Right. Just stick with Fitz Magic. Keep him healthy. Keep him, healthy, keep him upright. Let him um, recover from all those surgeries that he's had. Right. And if they don't need him, like, imagine him, you know, imagine them placing Tua into the offense next year with all of these – picks they have coming up they have two first two seconds i think all the cap room they have they can maybe get them another receiver or a running back or maybe another offensive lineman i mean just plug all those guys in for next year and then boom you're ready to go um so what would what would you say the fins need more more offensive help or more defensive help i don't know what they need more i just think when you place a young quarterback in a system like that like make sure you keep him upright, like make sure you keep him healthy. And that starts with the offensive line, um, a running game too. Again, look what happened with Sam Darnold. He has literally nothing around him um, and it can ruin a quarterback's career, which I think we'll talk about in a little bit. Right. Um, but the Chiefs, Brad, the Chiefs lost their first game. We really are in 2020, a crazy year. I'm not shocked at all. And you know what I'm going to say. Um, the two guys that made the biggest difference in that game are both Alabama grads. Henry Ruggs and Josh Jacobs carried that offense. I was really excited to see that kind of one-two combo. Darren Waller, too. Darren Waller had a good day. Um, uh, I'll go back to what I said at the beginning of the year. Uh, Derek Carr, this is going to be Derek Carr's year. Um, he finally has the right weapons around him. They're starting to get healthy. They're starting to get acclimated to the offense. And we saw it happen with Ruggs. Ruggs looked like a freak against the Chiefs, and it was awesome. I think he had two touchdowns, was it? I think so. Yeah. And then Josh Jacobs kept him alive. I saw a lot of fourth and ones, a lot of third and ones. Carr ran for a lot of them, got him the first down. Jacobs was tearing apart the defense. So this makes me ask, are the Chiefs on a little bit of some uh, Super Bowl fatigue too, or was this just a fluke? Are the Raiders that good? What what question is real? Uh, I think it's a little bit of just John Gruden's not a terrible coach. Like I think teams can have bad days, and I think teams match up well against other defenses, against other offenses. Um, the Chiefs' offense wasn't as uh, dominant as it usually is, and their defense, like. You put five hundred million into Pat Mahomes. There's going to be weaknesses somewhere else. You know what I mean? So yeah. like you don't have enough money for everybody. Um, but the Raiders, I still don't believe that they're going to oh. get where they want to go with Derek Carr. Like I think he's a serviceable quarterback. He's a good quarterback. I think he's serviceable. I don't think he's, oh. I think he's average. I, I don't think they're going to go anywhere with him. I'd be very surprised to see him. Like I don't think. Once he gets to a playoff game, if he goes against a Lamar Jackson, if he goes against a um, Pat Mahomes, even a Ben Roethlisberger, I don't think he'll he'll show up like they do. So, sorry, Derek Carr. So, what's your what's your suggestion for the Raiders then? Um, get off of Carr as soon as possible. Get Dak Prescott. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's gonna be my answer for everything now. Oh, your team stinks? Well, just get Dak Prescott. Get Dak Prescott. Yeah. <laughs> That'll save your team. It's a good um, answer. Yeah. Moving with the Chiefs, they signed Le'Veon Bell. That's kind of weird. Why? Your 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 running back room is already like a whole cluster of a mess. Like what why add another running back to that? Alaris proven he can do what he needs to with Mahomes. So why add Le'Veon Bell now? Why add Le'Veon Bell, period? I don't understand that signing. He could have gone to Miami and been the RB1. He could have gone to the Bills and split time with Singletary, and at least that would have made sense, kind of a one-two punch. 
but the Chiefs just doesn't it just doesn't click with the why. Well, especially since the Chiefs love to throw the ball. I mean, it's an Andy Reid offense. It's Pat Mahomes. You're not going to put the ball out of his hands many times. You know what I mean? Like, if they're a run first team, I'd be like, okay, yeah, maybe because Le'Veon Bell could get like ten carries or something, but he won't get that unless you know Edward Tiller gets hurt. But yeah, so I don't. Is Le'Veon is Le'Veon just going to become a third down bell cow? Like, is that is that what he is at this point? I mean, I think they're going to be able to use him in a variety of ways. Like, is it worth it though? Like, it's worth it for the Chiefs, obviously, because like you know why not? But for Le'Veon Bell, like. I guess if you just wanted to win, that's a good spot to go, but you're not really going to see the ball that much. Um, but then again, maybe anything is better than being with Adam Gase. So. Right, it's true. No one does well with Adam Gase. We need to say that now. No one. Yeah, uh, everybody is better without him. So Sam Darnold, trust me, buddy. Get out of there. ASAP. You'll probably be better for it. Yep. Uh, the Redskins are an interesting talk this week, mainly because Alex Smith got a little bit of time, which is nice to see. He didn't really do much, but it was nice to see him out in the field. Yeah. They did bench Dwayne Haskins for Kyle Allen. And I, I didn't want to talk about that because I just don't understand what they're doing. Like, I don't think Haskins is terrible, but I don't think Kyle Allen will be any better. better. Yeah. Yeah. You have to trust your young QB in situations. And the management literally yanked him out of those situations and said, we don't trust you. So then you need to move on from Dwayne Haskins. That's that's kind of where you're at at that point. If you're going to yank him out and say Kyle Allen's the guy, then go ahead and admit that you don't want him. That's just straight up. After out. a couple of years, though, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. last year, he didn't have much to work with. And this year, he really doesn't have much to work with. And you're just going to jettison him out. Like I don't, I don't get that for a young quarterback. I would think you would at least – like you're not going to go anywhere this year unless something crazy happens. You're not going to go anything this year. So why not ride it out with him, you know, and see what you have. Give him the experience. Yeah. To be at least a backup or maybe if he does something this year, you can trade him in the off season. Like, I don't think they're going to get anything for him at the trade deadline. No, No, I don't think so. Um, if anything, it'll be like a Josh Rosen situation where you just don't find anything you want and just jettison them for nothing, which is not great for the uh, Washington football team. So that kind of brings us to the trade scenarios. I have a few guys here for you, Brad, cool. that I wanted to talk about. Let's go with Dwayne Haskins first. Um, if he is on the way out, where would a perfect spot for him to be? The Jets. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> um Man, that's a good question. I don't see him as a starter anywhere. I see him as a very complimentary piece. It would be interesting to see him go to either Carolina to learn under Teddy Bridgewater. They're very similar style quarterbacks. Or if he would go to Arizona and learn under Kyler Murray a little bit because he's not very he's not very active outside of the pocket. He's a very pocket quarterback. So it would be kind of interesting to see him learn a little bit from Kyler Murray and kind of learn how to extend plays outside the pocket. Um, those are just my like cool picks, but I guarantee that he won't go to either one of those places. He'll probably be a backup in Minnesota or um, who else needs a backup? Probably the Bills. I don't even know who the Bills' backup is. Matt Barkley, man, come on. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, uh, I'd like him to go to the Steelers as a backup. I think that would be cool to learn under Big Ben and uh, that's true because Big, Big Ben is bigger, but yeah. like. They're both pretty big, and I think um, if, if Ben gets hurt, I think that'd be a good backup to have. I don't really trust Mason Rudolph. I don't. I don't think anybody he, else does. No, he he won't be their quarterback in the future. That's for sure. Yeah. So maybe you could trade him uh, like a fifth round pick. Maybe that's worth it for the Steelers just to bring him in as a backup. And maybe he could develop. You know, you never know. Um, but you know, Ben. Ben won't survive more than a year or two. He's always been up in the air about, I should retire, I should say, I should retire, I should say. Um, it's very Brett Favre with him. Uh, but if he does go, your next option is Mason Rudolph. I agree with you here. You're going to need something better than Mason Rudolph. And trust me, Dwayne Haskins is much better than Mason Rudolph. So, And he won't get his head beat in with a helmet. So, 
you go, Miles Garrett. Uh, <laughs> all right. So who else do we have? We we kind of put Dwayne Haskins away. Matt Ryan. Oh. Uh, Actually, I'll give you anybody on the Falcons. It doesn't have to be Matt Ryan. Take anybody from the Falcons who are looking to blow it up. Put them somewhere else. Julio Jones. Um, let's give him – I'll give you one. Let's give him to Philly. Philly needs an end zone threat. You want to talk about one of the receivers that's been targeted the most in the end zone? It would be Julio Jones. And let me tell you, he's a long and tall dude. He's going to get up there and get it and come back down with two feet. Uh, Philly desperately needs receivers. Yeah, he's not young, but at least he's reliable. I would jump up and down for joy if we got him, depending on what we gave up for him. Like if it was – Oh, gosh. If you give up a fifth for him, that's a steal. Something like that, awesome. Because, like, at least he is like knows how to play receiver. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And I think for the most part, stay on the field. It, it'd be nice to have someone that Wentz can trust that's back there. Uh I'd like Stay to see with the trade. Eagles. Zach Ertz, where should he go? Throw him to the Chiefs. Let's see the Chiefs run some two tight end sets. And Gosh, use, use kind of use uh, Ertz as bait. Yeah. Because clearly he can't actually work as the number one man. So use him as bait. He gets doubled all the time, man. Yeah. He can't get open. Well, then maybe if you have him with Kelsey on the field at the same time, maybe he gets open. I'd like to see him go to the Bears, honestly. Mm. I think that would be sick to, to go back with Nick Foles. That's true. Um, you already have two great receivers on the outside. You do have Jimmy Graham, but he's not going to be there forever. He's, he's an old man. Um, I'd love to see him go there. That'd be cool. Especially to a team that, like, I think he'll be a piece that a playoff caliber team would want like, you know, to kind of push them into the playoffs. So any team that's kind of up there, even like Seattle maybe or – Cowboys? They do need a tight end, but I would not – as an Eagles fan, I don't want to see him go there. Um, how about A.J. Green? I think he wants out. He doesn't seem like he cares about playing for the Bengals anymore. I don't know. Um, it would be interesting to see him go to the Cardinals and give them something else because we know maybe not. Maybe Fitzgerald plays 10 more years because he's some kind of alien. Um, but if Fitzgerald is out, uh, compliment something with DeAndre Hopkins and give you another person, A.J. Green. So you now have A.J. Green and DeAndre Hopkins. Now give Kyler two big options that he can heave it to. I think a team like the Saints would make a lot of sense. Um just because Michael Thomas, he's still a little banged up, and Sanders is like their their first option. Um, and Michael Thomas, I think, did get into some sort of an argument with someone on the defense, and he got suspended. So I don't know what he's doing <laughs> at all. Uh, maybe A.J. Green will help out Drew Brees quite a bit. I think yeah. that would be a good spot for him. Be better than Emmanuel Sanders. Sorry, Emmanuel Sanders. Sorry, Eman San. Yeah. Uh, next segment, we're going to go with, are you for real? Brad, I want you to start off with this. What's ticking you off? What's what's making you say, are you for real, man? Man, you always know what my are you for real is. LeBron is not the greatest of all time, and everybody's going to talk about it now because he's got four rings, but this was the easiest ring in his entire career to get, and he still almost lost it. And you want to tell me he's the GOAT. Dude's got Anthony Davis posting like triple doubles all the way through the finals and playoffs, and you won't tell me he's the GOAT. Get out of here. Anthony Davis is the GOAT of that Lakers team. LeBron is a wonderful compliment, a great knockdown shooter, wonderful assist machine, but he is not the GOAT. We, for, for me, though, I will tell you, I will give you this much, he is probably my second player all time. I agree with that. But he is not the number one. For me, no one can replace Jordan. Jordan is Jordan. Jordan had to work his way from nothing to get where he is. And you want to tell me that LeBron's the GOAT. Get out of here. Get out of here. Are you for real? <laughs> so you're saying Anthony Davis is the GOAT of that Lakers team right now? Absolutely. Wow. Young man can throw down. I would you, take Anthony Davis any day over LeBron. You would anger a lot of people with that statement. You know that. I'm sure I will. <laughs> but, hey, you know what? I didn't want LeBron on my team. I wanted Anthony Davis. So I'm probably going to make people angry with that. That's okay. Wow. We are might lose some viewers. <laughs> All right, Kyle, are you for real? What's yours? What's making you mad? 
Uh, this might be a little bit long, but just bear with me. I'm going to ask right. you some questions to, you know, very basic questions. Sure. Howie Roseman, are you for real? Okay, that's just the start of it. Uh, the three biggest needs in this offseason for the Eagles were wide receiver, linebacker, and secondary help. Okay, let's start with linebacker. They added nobody except for uh, two linebackers that came from rinky-dink conferences in the draft. One of them was a man named Davion Taylor who was drafted in the third round, okay? There were 16 linebackers drafted in the first three rounds. Two of them are hurt. They're on IR, so they can't play. 14 of them have played a game in the NFL. There's only one that hasn't registered a tackle. Who is that? Oh, it's Davion Taylor. Wow, good job, Howie Roseman. They drafted Sean Bradley in like the sixth round. I think he stepped on the field once this last game. He's from Temple. What Temple linebackers are any good? Are you for real, Howie Roseman? Their number one linebacker is a little white safety from Nebraska. He has rated out as the worst cover linebacker in the NFL. Are you for real, Howie Roseman? Okay. <laughs> Secondary help. Okay, great. They they traded for Darius Slay. Darius Slay. But they paid him $16 million a year. They also gave up a third and a fifth round pick for him. And guess what? Their secondary still stinks. So you put all of that money, all of those assets into their secondary, and it still stinks. Lastly, Brad, the most important position, we've talked about it, receiver, okay? I've mentioned on this podcast before, Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey cannot be trusted. They can't. They can't stay on the field. Even when they do, they get hurt, and Carson Wentz does not trust them. And you had them for this year. Awful. Marquise Goodwin, who is a nice guy, a really fast receiver. He had 160 yards receiving last year. Are we expecting him to like ball out when he like never has? That's not trustworthy. You can't trust a guy like that to come in and, and produce. Lastly, Brad, I'm going to give you some stats. I want you to tell me what's wrong with these, okay? There were like seven receivers drafted in the first round this year, all right? We have Henry Ruggs. Yeah. Your boy. Yeah. 170 yards. Okay. Next, we have Jerry Judy. 230 yards receiving and a touchdown. C.D. Lamb. 430 yards and a touchdown. We have Brandon Ayuk. Like 160 yards, 80 yards rushing and a touchdown. We have Chase Claypool in the second round with like 250 yards. He had four touchdowns, I think, against the Eagles. Um, that's pretty good. We had Justin Jefferson, who <laughs> he looks pretty good, right? He looks uh, he looks pretty good, like he might be a number one there. Oh, and and what do I see here? A receiver in the first round who has 90 yards receiving. Brad, who who would that be? Perhaps I'm going to assume Jalen Rieger. Ding ding! You got it right. I get it. He's hurt. But that's the issue is like they can't get someone who can stay on the field who can be a number one, heck, even a number two for Carson Wentz. He let this team down. He did not address any issues at all. Um, they drafted Hightower and Watkins, and, and they're not going to be relied upon. There's not many sixth, seventh round receivers that, that do get relied upon um, in a year. That's, that's kind of crazy. Um, it's a failure. They could have gotten C.D. Lamb. They could have traded for DeAndre Hopkins. Heck, they could have traded for Stephon Diggs, who are all falling out. Are you for real, Howie Roseman? Yeah, that's that's about what I expected. <laughs> I'm tired of him. I know some Eagles fans are like, oh, you know, I love him. Shut up. He stinks. I'm I done like with your head him. coach. But uh, uh, not your general manager. No, nope. I'm done with him. Yeah, I'm so tired of him. Actually, I'm so fed up right now. I might just walk off the set. Okay. Okay, that's good. Uh, next segment, Brad. Legit or quit? Uh, Philip Rivers. Uh, quit. Yeah. Quit. When you uh, when you don't have multiple passing touchdowns in the season in a game. That's, that's pretty bad, especially when you've been in the league as long as you have Philip Rivers. Quit. 
Yeah, I'm ready to quit on him too. I'm tired of seeing him. It looks like he doesn't even know what he's doing out there anymore. Or that he doesn't care. I can't figure out which one it is. He got paid a lot of money to be uh, average. That's for sure. Uh, the Packers playoff. Ch- Actually, I'm going to change this. The Packers championship chances. Ooh, legit. Legit. I'll stick with it. A-Rod has looked sizzling. I can't say anything bad about the Packers right now, other than you got some injuries that are kind of holding you back, but you're still winning. So the Packers, yeah, go Pack. How about the Bills playoff chances? The Bills, I'm going to say legit. Legit. That uh, division is kind of looking a little wide open. The Patriots are still trying to figure out whether they're healthy or not. The Dolphins, I don't think, are going to be that real, especially even if they get to the playoffs. It's not going to happen. I would put my money with the Bills. Yes, they got trounced by the Titans, but the Titans are also real. So uh, I'll stick with the Bills. Legit. How about Lamar Jackson's passing game? Uh, Legit? Question mark? (laughs) Um, he's really been struggling downfield this year. Uh, I don't know if it's just the teams he's been facing. Don't know if he's kind of regressing a little bit. Don't know if he's just scared to throw downfield, but it's just not. He hasn't had that hookup with uh, Hollywood Brown that he's been having in the past. His like best receiver right now is Mark Andrews, which I mean yeah. that's great, but you need to get your other guys involved. You've got Willie Sneed. You've got Hollywood. You really got to find some other targets, man. I'm going to say legit for now, but he needs to figure it out. How about Andy Dalton? Andy Dalton. I will say legit. I will say legit. Uh, I think the only reason that he sucked for so long is that he played for the Bengals. I loved him at TCU. He was he was the man. And then he got drafted by the Bengals, and we all knew where that was going. It's going to happen to you too, Joe Burrow. Get used to it. What are you saying? Uh, the Bengals aren't a good franchise, Brad? Is that what you're saying on air? You're going to make that. You're going to make that statement and say the Bengals aren't. Wow. I am. They don't know how to develop talent. That's a hot take for sure. It is. It is. It's not my hot take for this week, but it is one. What is your hot take for this week, Brad? My hot take? Yeah. Man, I'm going to talk about the Titans. Uh, The Titans are real, and I'm also going to talk about Tannehill. Tannehill was was crapped on for so long for playing with the Dolphins, and then he went to the Titans, and suddenly he was good. And people have said, well, I guess he just liked this offense better. No, Tannehill was always good. His revival was completely dependent on a better system and a better team and organization. Miami's gotten a lot better. I will say that. But when he played for Miami, it was, it was pretty up in the air. It was pretty up in the air for a lot of things. So I'm going to say uh, my hot take for this week is, A, the Titans are legit. Tannehill is legit. Get on board that train now. And my second part to that is whenever somebody leaves a different system, most of the time, they do well somewhere else. Why is that? Why do we suddenly find success somewhere else? Um, the, the newest person we're going to see that gets to experience that is Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Le'Veon went to Adam Gase after being with the Steelers, and he produced really well with the Steelers for a while. And then he went to the Jets, and granted, I know he's been hurt, but he did nothing. He did absolutely nothing for the Jets. So now he moves to the Chiefs. I guarantee you when he starts going off, remember this little conversation right here, that – teams that you're with matter i'm gonna talk about sam darnold too you've talked about it in the past that you think he's legit i've seen some flashes of brilliance but it's just not going to happen with the jets it's really not going to happen with the jets i don't see it happening um when you when you draft someone you can't just draft them and think that they are just going to produce and produce immediately we don't have to help him at all he was good in college he'll be fine here that is where you make the biggest mistake is stop investing in your rookies. Like with Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's a starter right now as a rookie. That's great, but still treat him like a rookie. He's still got a lot to learn to move forward. And we've seen it. We've seen some flashes of some really good passes, finding ways to keep the play alive. He is a really great talent, but don't stop developing talents just because they're successful early. And if you can't develop that talent, then you need to ship it for something else and try to get something else in return. Yeah. Uh, so and don't stop putting guys around that talent too. Like correct. just because, you know, Joe Burrow shows that he can probably be an elite quarterback. Don't be like, okay, well, he's got it on offense. You know, we can just focus somewhere defense. else. Yeah. Like, keep building, like keep help, helping him out. Um, but like you said, cool. Tannehill, where did he come from? Miami with who? Adam Gase. You get away from Adam Gase, man. 
he might as well just become a pro bowler at that point. I'm so, telling you, four touchdowns is like not a small thing in this league. Four touchdowns responsible for is pretty cool. Uh, I, I really do think the Titans could go somewhere because that division is up for grabs right now. It really is. And they look like the strongest one in that division. Yes, they do. They look really good. Um, so last week and the week before, we had our top five running backs, top five quarterbacks. This week, it's top five receivers. We'll go five through one. Uh, Brad, do you have your fifth receiver? I do, and it's going to upset you um, for the same reason that you said with Howie Roseman, that he should have grabbed him. It's going to be CeeDee Lamb for me. Oh, my God. Uh, more, more for just the impact that he's had on that offense than how he actually is rated up there. Um, I just like him in this five spot because you want to talk about a rookie that just got plugged in and immediately made a massive impact. It's going to be CeeDee Lamb because Gallup was struggling for a bit, Amari was struggling for a bit, and then when Dak started looking towards CeeDee, CD would grab it. CD would run up field. CD would grab extra yards. CD would get in that coverage and just snag onto the ball. And he didn't care if he got hit. He's looking better than some of those guys that have been on that roster for a long time. So, uh, yeah, my five right now is going to be CD Lamb. Number five for me is Tyreek Hill, uh, mainly because, like, I think when you face the Chiefs offense, obviously stop Pat Mahomes. But the biggest danger of that offense is like, Tyreek how Hill. in the world do we cover Tyreek Hill? Like no one can catch up with him. No one's as fast as him. We double him and still that doesn't even work. Um, and even for how small he is, dude, he gets up and, and grabs it. Like he looks like a jump ball receiver sometimes when he catches the ball. Yeah. Um, like if he was like 6'3", 220, he'd probably be in my number one, but even then, um, I think he's one of the best receivers in the game. Very hard to cover. Who's your number four? My number four is Adam Thielen. Um, yeah, cousin sucks, but Thielen makes it work. Um, it's kind of impressive because if you watch that offense, it's kind of a hot garbage mess, and then Thielen will just come out of nowhere and make it happen. Now, granted, he is competing with Dalvin Cook, but his numbers for competing with Dalvin Cook are on par with Calvin Ridley, DK Metcalf, Devontae Adams. He's up there. He's really good, but I wouldn't put him beyond four. I have Julio Jones. I don't think Julio has been as dominant as the receiver as he can be, but I also don't think that's his fault. Um, injuries play a factor. The Falcons having no idea how to get him the ball is also a factor, which is yeah. how do you not know how to get Julio Jones the ball? That's pretty stupid. Um, but he's still one of the best receivers in the game, I think. Size, speed, strength, ability to go up and snag the ball. My number four. Who's your number three? Uh, my number three is Calvin Ridley, actually, speaking of the Falcons team. Um, you want to talk about somebody else that's taken a big step forward in an offense that looks like hot garbage? Calvin Ridley has been the man for that Falcons team that has a crappy Matt Ryan uh, and just a deplorable offense. He has really shown through. I'm impressed with him. I think he can continue to build and be the next big number one wide receiver for the Falcons. My number three is Allen Robinson. Uh, and that's not just because I'm a Penn State fan, even though he was really good at Penn State. Um, I feel like he's one of the best jump ball guys in the league. I think he's one of the best route runners. He has some of the best hands. I think, like, honestly, if he had a consistent quarterback the last couple of years, he would be up there with probably number one, number two in terms of stats, production. I just I don't think he's had a good enough quarterback to get him the ball. That's my no. number three. Who's your number two? Especially when you, especially when you're talking about Blake Bortles, that you're not. It's not going to happen. Blake Bortles, yep. Trubisky, like that's some pretty bad quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, my number two is DK Metcalf. Wow, our lists Dude, are very different. Huh? But our lists are very different. Finally, our lists were the same for uh, running back. Or I'm sorry, for running backs and quarterbacks. So yeah. it's kind of nice to have some difference. Uh, DK Metcalf is the number one wide receiver for the Seahawks. Sorry, Tyler Lockett. DK Metcalf has officially taken over that spot because look where look where Russell Wilson goes in game time. I'm talking about the Minnesota Vikings game. Three times he went for DK Metcalf down to fourth and goal and won the game because he kept targeting Metcalf and Metcalf was going to make it happen. So I don't know who you're going to trust, but who I'm going to trust last minute in the game to come down with the ball is big old beast DK Metcalf. My number two is Devontae Adams. Um, I think he's so underrated. I do. Every, every time I watch the Packers and he's on the field, um, he just always knows how to get open. He's an incredible route runner. 
he's really good after the catch. Um, I would like, I'd want him on any team. I think he's like my number two and number one, I think are very, very similar. So I'll just go with number one. That's DeAndre Hopkins. Um, I've always wanted Hopkins on the Eagles. I think he was amazing with the Houston Texans. Again, I don't know why they got rid of him. Um, probably, probably the best hands in the league. Um, very hard to tackle. Big body type of guy. Um, like in terms of that old school number one, the big guy who could run and catch. Hopkins is my number one. So, who's your number one? That's probably why I didn't even think about him for top five because he's just good. Devontae Adams. When he's healthy and when he's on the field, yeah, that's the man. That's who I want the ball to go to. I don't know if it's because it's Aaron Rodgers. I don't know if it's because it's him. Don't know. But I like him. He's good. He's really good and definitely underrated. Oh, can I talk um, about how? Yeah, I didn't even think about, about Hopkins. I didn't even think about Hopkins. Yeah, because he's just good. Like, you don't think about it. It's just automatic. It doesn't matter where you put him. He's automatic. Yeah. Quickly, I wanted to mention one of my fantasy teams – I have DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, and Amari Cooper, and Ezekiel Elliott, and DJ Moore, and I'm still one and four. Bro. Go figure. I don't. I don't know. Bro. Stupid uh, bro. fantasy. Uh, speaking on fantasy, let's go waiver pickups. Brad, who should we pick up this week? Hey, let's not mess it up this week, and let's start out with Brandon Cooks. Okay, pick him up. Uh, we both were kind of like, yeah, Brandon Cooks sucks. I had him on my team. And I said, oh, yeah, this is probably not the week for him. Let him go. Uh, Don't make our mistake. Brandon Cooks is starting to emerge as the wide receiver number one for the Texans. Get on top of it now. Um, Also, uh, Teddy Bridgewater, if you don't have Teddy Bridgewater and you need a backup quarterback, I know a lot of people lost Dak. uh, That would be a really good one to have. He has been productive every single week he's been out there, which is a shock since their run game has been ridiculously good. Um, I also put Fitz Magic. If you need another quarterback, I'd say Ryan Fitzpatrick, especially against the Jets. Uh, let's see what happens. He could have a big game there. Um, also, if you need another quarterback because you lost Dak, I'd say Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert has also been playing out of his mind for a rookie for the Chargers. Um, let's see who else we have in here. If you need a running back, Devonta Freeman has kind of emerged as the number one running back for the Giants. I would absolutely trust him to get some touches uh, because Daniel Jones just can't seem to pass correctly. Um, uh, Kyle, I can't read this last one. I'm sorry. Oh, is that Le- Michael, Le- Michael P. Ryan from Ryan? the yeah. New York Jets. Since Le'Veon sure. Bell got released, um, they do have Frank Gore there still, but I think Le- Michael P. Ryan, who is like their third round pick, um, really performed really well at Florida at the Combine. He's a rookie. I think you're going to see him get some carries. Um, I picked him up in our league that we have. Um I think if they were smart, they would play him more than Frank Gore because I think P. Ryan can develop into a uh, a strong number two or even a number one. I pick up with Michael P. Ryan. Uh, two guys, both last name Williams. Preston Williams from the Miami Dolphins. Yep. He had a crazy good game with uh, Fitzpatrick. Um, he's definitely targeting him like quite a bit. And then Mike Williams, who was uh, healthy for the first time this week. Oh my! I don't know if you watched that, but he caught everything. That yeah. one, I think, uh, third down, Herbert just chucked it up to him, and there were three guys around him, and, and Williams came down with it. So pick him up, especially if Keenan Allen is still banged up. Um, how about our stardoms for this week? Uh, again, we're going to continue to say any defense playing the Jets. The Jets have proven they really suck, so just stick with that. Uh, I'm going to say the Ravens' defense against the Eagles. Uh, the Eagles have been pretty high in turnover rate, uh, so that should be good for the Ravens. Sorry, buddy. Uh Mark Andrews against the Eagles as well because uh, Philly is giving up a lot of fantasy points to tight ends. Uh, let's see what else we have in here. Ezekiel Elliott. Is that Ezekiel Elliott against the Cardinals? Yeah. 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 It's it's Zeke. Just stick with Zeke. That's usually a pretty good one. Um, and Adam Thielen against the Falcons. The Falcons have been gashed in the passing game recently, and Thielen has proven to be the number one target still for Kirk Cousins, even though we've seen the emergence of Justin Jefferson. Um, I bench him for this week. If you have Tyler Boyd in your lineup, I probably would just because the Colts give up the second least amount of passing yards to fantasy receivers. It's about like 130 per game, which is super, super low. Um, so I'd bench him, drop him, just drop the Sean Jackson. He can't get healthy. Drop Alshon if you have him. They stink. 
Um, trade targets, you mentioned A.J. Brown. He had a heck of a game this last game. Um, I think he was drafted pretty high in most leagues, but he's been hurt. Yeah. But um, I definitely look at adding him because I think he's their number one. So, um, I added hang on to Le'Veon Bell. Uh, this was before we knew where he was going to sign. I'm still going to say hang on to him if you have him. I didn't. I picked up Daryl Henderson in my league. Um, but that may change very quickly, especially if uh, Le'Veon gets a lot of touches in that Chiefs offense and somehow gets used as like a, a passing running back. Um, hang on to Le'Veon Bell. Let's see what happens. Right, and that's it for our fantasy segment. Next, we have buzzer beater questions like always. Do you have one or a couple that you have? I only have one. Uh, a fantasy question that we had in. Um, would you trust Lamar Jackson against Philly? or Ryan Fitzpatrick against uh, the Jets? Who would you start? Uh, definitely Lamar, just because I think he's more consistent and the Eagles' defense is more consistently bad to right. give up points to the opposing quarterback. Uh, Fitzpatrick could certainly go off, but yeah. as we know with him, he's up and down. And Lamar Jackson likes to use his legs too, and that'll always give you an added probably like five, six points a week right. um, compared to most quarterbacks. So. Um, I do have one from cousin Steven. He said, don't look at any of the trade scenarios on ESPN or online. Give me a random trade that you would uh, love to see that you think could happen. That's not out in the, you know, trade scenario either. I've got one, but it's kind of been talked about a little bit, but you and I had already talked about it before. So I guess it doesn't count. Uh, Sam Darnold to the Colts. Um, the Colts need somebody. You overpaid Phillip Rivers. Dude's throwing more picks than touchdowns. You need something else. Brissett is not the answer. Um, Sam Darnold would be interesting to me to go to the Colts. Um, he has a very Andrew Luck style like play to him. He's a big boy. He keeps the play alive. Kind of the things that, that uh, Indy needs to take control of that division again and push for a Super Bowl. Uh, that would be my crazy touch for that one um my second one would be if we're just picking anybody and like anything that could happen um i would like to see uh the ravens try to go for julio jones because willie sneed is not a good second option all that lamar really has is hollywood brown it would be nice for him to have a second option which ideally it's not going to be a young receiver so it would probably be an older receiver uh julio multiple times has been kind of on the fence about whether he wants to stay with atlanta or not um, it would be nice to add an end zone threat for Lamar. I was actually going to go a similar route. Um, I had Kenny Galladay from the Detroit Lions going to the Ravens. Um, I think he's, you know, Julio Jones-ish. Not fully Julio Jones. Right. But a little bit younger, big body type of guy. I think the Lions are – they don't know what they're doing. The, the Lions uh, definitely should get rid of Matt Patricia, um, which they might soon. Actually, you know what? Maybe that'll happen next week because a week ago I, I said, hey, Bill O'Brien should be, you know. So, yeah. Matt Patricia, you're next. Uh, you're fired. Uh, you're gone. Yeah. So, I think Kenny Galladay should be traded to the Baltimore Ravens. That would give the Ravens another awesome weapon to have. Um, another one that I have is who is the best team in the NFC least? it's still going to be the Cowboys for me. If you're going to talk about pure talent and being able to get it done with all those weapons, it's going to be the Cowboys. Now that defense needs to pick it up, but it's definitely not the Giants. It's not going to be the Eagles. And I'm not even going to talk about the other team in that division because it just, it doesn't even matter. I think it's going to be the Cowboys. Uh, my team's the Washington Redskins are easily the best team in the division. Okay. Next. Oh. Uh, I'm just oh. <laughs> Actually, no, that'll be my answer. And then once they win the, NFC least I can refer back to this episode. Um, my last one that I have is from my cousin Jeff, actually. Um, you probably can't comment too much on this, but he wants to know my ultimate lineup, uh, my favorite Phillies of all time. So I'll just go, I'll do this pretty quick. Uh, yeah. He'll like this. Uh, catcher, Chooch, first base, Ryan Howard, second base, Chase Utley, shortstop, Jimmy Rollins, third base, Pedro Feliz, left field um 
Uh, left field, Pat Burrell, center field, Aaron Rowan, right field, Bryce Harper. And then I'll throw in some starting pitchers. I'll go Cole Hamels, Roy Halladay, Aaron Nola. That's my starters. So. And Chipper Jones, just to top it off. <laughs> yeah, sure. Stick them on there. <laughs> um, that about does it for this one. Brad, do you want to tell the people where they can find us? We're everywhere. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can find us. You can follow us on just like personal things on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Almost forgot Twitter. Um, we're also on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify. Um, we're on Facebook. You can go back and watch our video there. We're also on YouTube. You can go watch us there. Um, we are everywhere just for you guys. So that if you can't catch us live, you can find us somewhere else. Um, and I think that about wraps it up for me. So uh, thank you for tuning in for episode three, and we will see you next week for episode four. Bye. See ya.